What's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> I can't pull it out of my head. You're gonna have to cut this. <laughs> hey, Jessica. Hi. I really appreciate <laughs> you, you uh, doing this video because you're gonna help out a lot of people. And there's like a lot of uncomfortable questions. I mean, people wanna know this stuff, but it's like, if they post this on social media, people's gonna give a hard time. And it's really kind of cool that you would do a video and answer some of this stuff and help people out. So I just want to thank you up front for doing that. I really appreciate it. Of course. Okay. What, you know, before we get started, you know, I don't know, maybe we should wait to the end, but there's so much going on with this coronavirus thing and this pandemic, and now they're talking about a vaccine, and there's a lot of questions about vaccines, and I know you got some really good answers about that, but let's hang on for a second. I want to maybe hit that at the end right. and ask you a couple of these other questions that got submitted to us. Yeah. Um, but what, you know, how, what makes you an expert, huh? <laughs> what makes you think you're an expert? <laughs> this is the first thing people want to know. What do you, how do you have the right to answer this stuff? Well, I have a lot of certifications. Um, I have a bachelor's in psychology with an emphasis in animal behavior. I have lots of other certifications, including dog training. I've been a positive reinforcement dog trainer for a number of years. I've helped hundreds and hundreds of dogs, which I'm just so thrilled about because that's the whole point is to help these animals out. So I, I just do my best every day and continue to learn. And, and that's really what do does you, it. Do you have pets? I do. I have a lot of pets. Do you really? <laughs> I've had a lot of pets over the years and I still have quite a few. Yeah. Uh, right now we, I have a dog named Kim. She's wonderful. Where'd She's, you get her from? Where'd she come from? She actually came from a rescue in Mexico. Oh, wow. Yeah. And not that I set out looking for a dog from Mexico, but we live so close to the Mexican border. It just and you're at what town happened. Now? I'm in San Diego. San Diego, California. Yeah. So I looked at a lot of dogs and I reached out to a lot of rescues and as fate would have it, Kim is who we ended up with. Okay, and so you have other pets too? Yeah, I have a bunch of cats. Bunch of cats. <laughs> I have a bunch of cats. Okay. And um, we've I mean, had how other many dogs. Exactly, because people are going to hear a bunch and they're going to think, crazy cat lady, she's got 100 cats. Yeah, well, right now I have six. Six. Okay, yeah. That's cool. And have you had those long? I Their whole lives. I've had some of them. Well, let's see. Sasha is almost 18. She's my oldest. And yeah, so. Okay. You actually teach. Uh, courses on this and at the end maybe we could you know tell people how they could access some of those courses um, yeah, but uh, I'd like to get into some of these questions are you ready to answer the people's questions Ooh, they're gonna be uncomfortable they aren't are they <laughs> okay. the first, I think the first one is probably one of the biggest things that people want to ask and they're afraid to because they think people are gonna look down on them but the question is are you ready yes Little drum roll how long can I leave a dog alone and I'm yeah. sure, and if you would hit upon this, it depends on where they're alone, outside, inside, in a room, whatever, what they have access to, all those different things. But can you go ahead and answer that question for us? Absolutely. And it is a very popular question, and it is a very unpopular answer. <laughs> um, because, And it does depend greatly on circumstances and how old your dog is. If you have a puppy, they do not... They do not need to be left alone very long at all, especially if you're in the potty training phase. They need to be attached to your hip, basically, while you're potty training. And that could be weeks, that could be months. And so that is a very unpopular answer, but it's the truth. If you want to be effective in potty training, um, you and your dog need to be together so that you can do what you need to do to potty train. But overall, if we're talking about a healthy adult dog, uh, I, I, have done a lot of research on this and it's my professional opinion that you should not leave even a healthy adult dog alone any longer than four hours at a time and here's why it's not because they you know need so much attention even though dogs are very social animals and they do want to be with us is that's not the primary reason the reason is that dogs need exercise. Dogs need enrichment, meaning they need something going on. They need to be able to hunt something or chase something or play with something and get that energy out. So, and they may also need a potty break and that's really important too. So, uh, no longer than four hours is the... Well, what do you tell people? I mean, they got to go to work for eight hours. Yeah. You know, how do you, how do you handle that? Yeah, it is. It's difficult. And the best thing to 
to do really is hopefully you work close enough to where you live that you can go home on your lunch break and you can give your dog a break and exercise, yeah. right? Yeah. Taking a break from work is uh, probably the best and easiest way for most people. But if you live too far away from where you work, you, you know, you have to look at other options and it could be maybe someone else in the household comes home from work or maybe a teenage child gets home early from school and can let the dog out and play with the dog. Maybe you have a friend, a family, uh, a family, a neighbor, or somebody, an elderly person in the neighborhood who desperately needs interaction and wants to get out of their house. Somebody who can come by during the day and That's check in on your idea. dog. Then, then they get they get some company too, right? Absolutely. Okay. And if all else fails, you can hire a dog walker or a pet sitter to come in, or have your dog go to a, a puppy or doggy daycare. It'll now I'm gonna I'm gonna get into the uncomfortable part. What if they can't leave work? What if they don't have a neighbor and they can't afford to send it to a daycare? What would you say to somebody who's going to be gone eight, ten hours a day and they have a dog? I would say to do the best you can and make sure you are getting up early enough that you are getting your dog plenty of exercise before you go to work and not confine them to a small crate. If, they, if, if, if you have to confine them at all, give them a larger area to confine them in. Maybe it's um, a downstairs so they don't have access to the upstairs or a kitchen or something like that. Just so, and, and leave them with enrichment. So you can leave them with um, hiding different pieces of enrichment that maybe have food or treats in them so that they can spend some of their time during the day hunting different items around their area. Um, but leave them with enrichment, make sure they are getting plenty of exercise, and come straight home. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to lead you to the more uncomfortable part. Somebody doesn't have a dog, they don't have a neighbor to help, they don't have family members to help, they can't afford to send the dog to a daycare, but they're thinking about getting a dog um, and they can't come and give that dog a break, what would you tell those people? I would tell them that maybe it's not the right time in their lives to get a dog. Okay, so However, they, yes, shouldn't get a dog. they shouldn't get a dog, but that doesn't mean they can't get a pet because cats can be left alone for eight hours a day oh, okay. and maybe they should look into getting a cat uh, instead of a dog or maybe a fish or, you know, I mean, there are all kinds of different animals out there that can still provide comfort and companionship, probably a cat better than a fish. But I, I mean, there are other types of animals out there and I, I, I don't feel that it's fair for the dog, no. Okay, cool. So here's another big question a lot of people get, and I think there's a lot of you know talk in the media about this, more so than it's ever been before, but what should I feed my dog is the question we have. What, I mean, what do you feed a dog? Yeah, it is very polarizing uh, because there's a lot of marketing there's a lot of money behind pet food it is a multi-billion dollar industry in the u.s alone so yeah there is a ton of money and advertising behind it um the bottom line and i'll extrapolate a little bit but the bottom line is do the best you can with what you have available to you so that is the answer but to extrapolate on that a little bit, if there is any way possible that you can feed your pet a balanced, fresh food diet, then you should, absolutely. Kibble is incredibly unhealthy for our pets. So that's the hard pellet that's things? That's the so hard should, pellet things. Should anybody feed those to their dog? This is an uncomfortable part. <laughs> it's better than nothing. It's better than an unbalanced diet. So if you are making your own food and it is not balanced nutritionally, then kibble would be better, yes. But if kibble is the only thing you can feed, then adding in fresh ingredients, even a couple of times a week, whether that's just scraps left over, maybe you've, you're cutting up chicken and you're cleaning it before, um, cooking it and you have scraps left over or some extra veggies or something like that, that you can add that in to the bowl a couple of times a week, that is going to dramatically improve their health. So, so kibble basically is one step above starving on the bed. I mean, that's uncomfortable, yeah. but it's true, right? <laughs> that's okay. Now, what, yeah. if there, what if there's no budget restrictions and a person wants to really give their dog 
a great diet, they don't want to make it because they don't have time for all that, mm -hmm. what would you suggest? So there are a number of really amazing companies right now that are producing on a fairly small scale. Um, they're not huge yet because this is a gr growing trend. Uh, actually, the trend is feeding kibble. Let's be honest. People have only been feeding kibble to their pets for about the last 80 years. Uh, so that really truly is the trend. But because that's all we've known our whole lifetime, we don't see it as a trend. Um, but that truly is the trend. So uh, if, if there is no budget restrictions, if there, there is, but, but you also don't have time and you don't want to make something yourself, completely understandable. There are a number of wonderful companies that are making very, um, I mean, amazing foods that are completely nutritionally balanced. And uh, I actually have a list of them in my group. Uh, so, could you, could you yeah. maybe put that in the description? Absolutely. Below? Okay, I so will put a, a yeah, because, some links because you know, if, if somebody's watching this today, then that, that list is going to be current and accurate. But if somebody is watching this two years from now, maybe it, it, right, it right, might not right. be. But it's, so, it's far better than kibble, anything you have on that list. Absolutely. 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 So, how? What are the benefits of giving them a balanced diet? I mean, what difference does it make? I mean, you know, I've seen people have dogs for you know 15 years and they fed them kibble. I mean, um, what's the difference if you take a, a dog and feed them this balanced diet you're talking about versus kibble for 15 years? So, balanced and fresh are two different things. So, balanced kibble is balanced. It's unnaturally balanced, um, and I could do probably an hour or more on on that because it's it's synthetic vitamins and minerals that are added in to the food after it's processed um, that's balancing the diet so kibble is balanced that's why it's better than an unbalanced diet so if you're just throwing some meat and vegetables in a bowl and feeding it to your dog every night that's not balanced um, so kibble technically would be better than that just because it's balanced in vitamins and minerals uh, but feeding a fresh food diet is better because a balanced fresh food diet is better because it's nutritionally appropriate, it's species appropriate, it's biologically appropriate, it's foods that are nourishing the body, that are allowing your pet to thrive versus just survive. Well, I think people are wondering though, what, what difference is going to make to the dog? You know? I mean, well, it's going to make a lot of effects. difference. Yes, and we're seeing, we're starting to see science to scientific studies about this. Um, it's been very difficult to get scientific studies up and running because on fresh food diets because it costs a lot of money to do these things and to, to create these studies and follow through on these studies. Um, they're very expensive to do. So we're starting to see some scientific research on it, and we know that. Um, you know, environment plays a role in health and we know that genetics play a role in health. So some of the studies that are coming out are showing that if a mother has only, if a mother dog has only eaten kibble their whole life, then there is some, some of, of those health deficits would be passed on to her pups. What, are, what would be examples of health deficits? Uh, well, there's, there are a lot of things, I mean, cancer probably is the number one. And that's a big thing. Though, it is right? a big thing. They, I mean, it's like one in three dogs in the U.S. Oh are getting God. cancer at this point. One in three? If that was humans, that would be huge. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, so that's probably the biggest one, but there are so many others. I mean, just obesity. Um, Could it affect their eyes, their oh. skin, their coat, all that <laughs> I stuff? I didn't understand what you're saying. Yeah, um, absolutely. It can affect, it can affect um, vision, can affect their skin and coat. Um, it can affect it, it, all sorts of development. I mean, it could so like make... So, if the dog's it, itching a lot, could that be the diet? Oh, absolutely. Really? Absolutely, yes. I mean, of course, there are envir environmental allergies that could be at play if your dog is itching, especially if they're only itching seasonally. Um, but if your dog is itching, first of all, you definitely need to seek veterinary help. Like, this is in no way meant to be <laughs> veterinary advice. Sure. Um, but yeah, definitely seek veterinary help, especially because it could be a number of things. It could be a yeast infection. It could be a number, but food and a improper diet could lead to 
excessive yeast infections. So, you know, there, there are a lot of things that um, traditional medicine doesn't really cover. Traditional medicine, and, and, and some veterinarians, uh, we call them integrative veterinarians, and, and some are holistic veterinarians, are gonna be able to help you beyond just medicating your animal. Uh, but yes, so there are so many things that uh, food affects, just like with us. Our diet completely affects our life, whether we realize it or not. And I know we're running short on time here, but I'd like to get two quick questions in, okay. and we want to also hit upon a vaccine thing that so many people are interested in. But what I'd like to ask you is, somebody submitted something about something called alpha training. Could you quickly explain what alpha training is and would you recommend it or not and why would you recommend it or not? Yeah, and actually all of these questions that I'm talking about today, I have other videos on my channel that go more in depth okay. on all of these topics. So, uh, but quickly, alpha training basically was very, very popular for decades. Um, and it, it basically is just you being in control of your dog. Like a so, pack leader. Like a pack leader, yes. Okay, okay. So the reason that we want to avoid alpha training now is because there has been new scientific research that has disproven the this, this study that was done. Um, it was a faulty study and we now know that which led to all of this alpha training. And we now know that that was all incorrect and new studies have come out telling us that the most appropriate way to train a dog and the most effective way to train a dog is through positive reinforcement. And alpha training is not positive reinforcement whatsoever. So alpha training basically is going to hinder the relationship you have with your dog. It's going to harm the bond that you have with your dog. Positive reinforcement is actually going to build that bond and training is going to be so much easier. So it's going to be easier. You're going to build a bond with a dog. I mean, why wouldn't anybody want to do positive, right? Now, exactly. you actually have training on positive reinforcement. Is that I correct? do. Yeah. I have a book. You have a book. I have okay. a book. So could we put the links to the book? and maybe yep. your training in the description? Absolutely, I have a book, I have an online, I have multiple online courses. I have one online course that encompasses everything. So if you want to start from the beginning and work with your dog all the way through with everything, you can get that course. And I have a couple other different courses for people who just, this is the one thing they want to study right now, that's perfectly fine. So uh, yeah, there's lots of different courses. Okay, so we're down to that last thing. You know, we got this coronavirus going on, a pandemic, and you know, there's anti-vaxxers now. And there's the question, does my dog really need a rabies shot every year? Now, I know you can't cover every single shot, but this rabies thing is a big one. And a lot of vets give a rabies shot every single year. Does your dog need a rabies shot? <laughs> and I know you're not a medical professional, but right. what, what have you studied? Yeah, so while I'm not a medical professional, uh, what I do know First and foremost is that, okay, I am not anti-vaccination. I am pro-appropriate vaccination. So there's a thing called a titer test. And what a titer test is, it's a blood test that is evaluating the antibodies that are within an organism. So titer tests are available for humans, for cats, for dogs, for all I think pretty much all animals. Don't quote me on that. I'm not a medical professional, but the titer test tells you if there are appropriate antibodies that would provide immunity to whatever it is you would be vaccinating for. So in this case, rabies. So if you continue to vaccinate your pet year after year after year without titer testing, and most veterinarians know about titer testing, but it is a bit more expensive and not everybody is willing to do it. Um, a lot of veterinarians don't even tell you about it. They, they're just plugging along, vaccine, 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 vaccine. So if your dog or cat or animal has appropriate antibodies that would equate to immunity, why would you continue to inject Whatever is in these vaccines, it's not just the antibodies. There are other things that are keeping the vaccine shelf stable, right? We know that there are um, heavy metals and different different 
things in vaccines that can potentially be harmful to the body. And when you're initially vaccinating, you weigh the risk, right? You, you say, I know that there are some things in vaccines that may not be wonderful for my dog, but we do want this immunity to be built up in their system, so you weigh the risk. But over time, we titer test, or a titer tests are available, so that we don't have to over vaccinate our animals and expose them to other things entering their bodies that are harmful to them. So if my dog, for instance, gets a rabies vaccination and the following year I get a titer test and it says your dog has sufficient antibodies that uh, uh, would equate to immunity, why would I give them another vaccination? I'm over vaccinating. Wow, that's interesting. I don't think most people know that that, that, that test even exists. Right. And, and could we maybe put a link to what a titer test is? In the Absolutely. Test? Yeah, okay. definitely. Well, you know, I really appreciate you taking time out today. I know it's going to help a lot of people. Uh, you, you covered a lot of great stuff about how, you know, how long to leave a dog alone, you know, what you should feed the dog. Uh, and, and the rabies thing was just phenomenal. And of course, the training of your dog. Um, is there, where could somebody, if they wanted to get more information about what you had to offer, you know, what do you have to offer and where could they find it? And do you have like groups? I mean, what, what, where yeah. could they get more information? Yeah, so I'll put um, links in the description below. For my website, you can uh, link directly to my book, directly to the online training courses, as well as my group. And my group is a really great place to start. I have a lot of files in the group to help people understand what positive reinforcement training is um, and, and the file on the foods and why you should really seek to feed a better quality food, um, something better than kibble if you possibly can. So there's a lot of great stuff in the okay, group, so a lot of resources. Of so in case people want to look it up, the name of the group is The Art of Pet Parenting. The Art of Pet Parenting. Now, these files that are in there, is there a charge for these? Do people need to buy these? No, it is completely oh, wow. free. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, so those are all free. It's a really great resource, actually, Okay. to awesome. get you started. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking your time. Hopefully, you'll do this again and help people out. Um, guys, if you have questions you want to submit to Jessica, you can put that in the comments section below. Uh, she loves to get those questions. You can also comment in the group. This is the best place to post your questions, if you have a problem with your pet, you need advice, any of that, put it in the description uh, below. And once again, Jessica, thank you so much for taking time out of your day and yeah. sharing all this useful information. I hope it wasn't too uncomfortable. <laughs> okay, that's it, right guys? If you have uncomfortable <laughs> questions, keep those questions coming and Jessica will answer them. Thank you yeah. again, Jessica. Thank you so much.